Hello friends, welcome to this channel and from today onwards we are starting with our series on the configuration of MyCom P444 or P442 relay using S1 Agile software. I am using the MyCom S1 Agile version 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, you can use any version be it 1.3, 1.4 or 1.5 but the basic concepts and the configuration methods will remain the same throughout the different version of the software. I will try to cover all the concepts related with the configuration of MyCom uh, P444 and P442 relay using uh, S1 Agile software in 2 to 3 sessions and in the first session basically I will cover about the configuration of input output and the meaning of different settings in mycom relays and then in the next session we will discuss about the uh, PSL logics that is how to create the PSL logics in mycom relays and followed by the MCL uh, file creation or the 61850 file creation in one of the separate session. I am using one of the project which is the demo project only for the purpose of this uh, understanding of the configuration and PSL logic of uh, MyCom relays and uh, I have already read the settings PSL and the 61850 files for MyCom P442 and P444 relays. Now if you see on your desktop and before this uh, if you have already subscribed to this channel then you must be aware that all the contents on this channel are published in both Hindi and English language and you may watch any session as per your convenience because the content wise there is no difference between the Hindi video as well as the English video both are exactly the same only difference is the language. So now uh, before starting there is one more thing since I have already uh, uh, made this project and if you want to connect uh, or if you want to read from the relay for the first time then there are many options one of the option is you can add the device using right click and then new device and in the new device you can uh, enter whether it is p40 series or something like that then you can go to this enter the text that is if it is p442 then see the relay description on the front of the relay there are some model number written over there so you just select that model number and then next 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 and then enter the complete model number and after that you can connect to the relay by using either the front port or rear port so now if you see here suppose this is the complete model number so you can select the complete model number from here uh, presently i am not going to use this because I am not connected to any relay so I will not be able to read from the relay. So cancel. Sorry. So if you see here now you can select any model number uh, whichever model number is there in your relay and just click next. After that you can select which port you are using or not. So this is one of the methods. Second and the easiest method is go to this option quick connect and in the quick connect select this P40 series. Now you can connect to the relay either through front port or rear port or through ethernet port. Suppose I am connected through the front port using the 9 pin connector then select the front port. Define the COM port whichever COM port you are using and then finish and it will automatically connect to your relay. Since I have not connected my laptop to any of the relay so it will so the device cannot be found but if your uh, laptop is connected with the mycom relay then it will connect and after this uh, connection you just have to right click on the settings and then extract settings then uh, uh, click uh, right click on psl extract uh, this psl and in the end right click on mcl 61850 and then extract ft banks so uh, I have already done all this process so just uh, the important things that is how to configure the input output and what are the meaning of different settings. So double click on these settings this will open over here the settings and the configuration of mycom p444 and mycom p442 relay is the easiest among all the numerical relay. 
so once you double click it will open like this just go to the first in the system data here you have to enter only some basic details like the description that is the line details or and the feeder details then plant reference and the frequency which is 50 hertz for uh, or 60 hertz then uh, go to next which is date and time in case of date and time you uh, can select with uh, the time synchronization method and then the important thing is this uh, so if uh, i am using this relay in india so the you know that the indian time is gmt plus 5 or 30 minutes so you have to select this as local time enable fixed and local time offset is 5 hours 30 minutes that is 330 minutes and dst you have to disable dst is basically day saving time so in europe uh, european countries basically they use two time zones or two time reference one uh, this in the summer and in the winter so in summer and in winter there is a difference of one hour so you can enable this uh, dst and then you have to uh, define the D, uh, DST time. So uh, suppose I am enabling this DST. Just click OK. Now you have to uh, set this DST offset time. So suppose I am using this DST offset time as 60 minutes. So then this 60 minute will start from which duration to which duration. After that uh, the DST end time that also you can select. But in India we don't uh, use these things. So you simply disable and select okay after that go to configuration in the configuration we can enable or disable any setting as per our requirement as per the settings received from your head office and as per the setting template so the setting group should be enabled after that uh, or any out of the four setting groups only one setting group should be enabled uh, generally uh, for some specific specific purpose you can enable setting group two three four also but generally only one setting group is enabled then you have to enable or disable the various functions like distance protection, power swing, backup over current, broken conductor, earth fault, over voltage as per your requirement. Uh, you can then uh, go just here and in the setting values whether you want to set in the primary or in the secondary that you have to select just double click and then you can select it as primary or secondary. Now next thing after this configuration just go to ct and vt in case of ct and vt what we have to set is the primary and secondary of this uh, cvt or the voltage transformer capacitive voltage transformer and the current transformer so just uh, double click on this voltage settings and set the voltage rating that is primary if it is 400 kv or suppose uh, this is 765 kv so just enter 765 kv then the secondary that is 110 volt then uh, the CT primary suppose it is 2000 so just uh, click here as 2000 and then ok then the secondary will be 1 ampere and so then the mutual compensation if this is a parallel line and mutual compensation wiring is there then you can uh, set the mutual compensation CT ratio also then save and after that uh, go to this uh, record control or make the disturbance recorder which is more important in case of disturbance recorder we can set uh, the duration of disturbance recorder which is suppose 3 seconds then the various analog channels that is VA, VB, VC, VN and IA, IB, IC, IN then we can select the various digital channel that is a star, trip then uh, the distance trip function so suppose you want to select any channel for your DR triggering just double click and select any signal suppose I am using this signal like uh, all pole dead so just select all pole dead ok and then uh, you uh, go to digital trigger that is the next and there you will be having three settings that is no trigger trigger low to an high and trigger high to low no trigger means uh, although this signal becomes high or this sig uh, signal becomes active your DR will not be triggered only because of this signal you can select this as trigger low to high so whenever this signal becomes active uh, after any inactive state if this signal becomes active then a DR will be triggered or you can select trigger high to low so whenever this signal resets or whenever this signal changes a state from high to low then only DR will be triggered so ok like that you have to select all the signals whatever you want in your uh, uh, DR or in your disturbance recorder then uh, you can see here some of the signals like Z2, T2, Z3, T3 these are the default signals available in the relay Z2 is basically zone to start or zone to pick up T3 
T2 is the time of operation of zone 2. Now, if you want to uh, rename these signals, then you have to connect to the MICOM relay through a 25 pin connector, which is a special cable, and you have to purchase that cable from the manufacturer or GE and then connect your relay. And after that, you just rename this uh, using the DDB of this signal. So, if you see Z2, just uh, uh, presently you will be having Z2, Z3, Z4. But once you connect with the 25 pin connector, then you will be having the options of changing the names. So, after that, uh, just go down and now you will see some of the signals like opto uh, signal that is opto level 1, opto level 2, opto level 3. These are basically the hardwire boundary input signals like your breaker status that is the main CB, tie CB status, carrier received, direct trip received. So, all these signals are your opto input signal. So, now how to set this opto input signals? The configuration is very very easy in case of MyCom relay. Just go to group 1 go to input level and suppose these are some of the signals so suppose you want to uh, you, as per your scheme the opto input level 1 is suppose the cb r page open so just uh, select this as cb r page open suppose this is any cb suppose this is 401 cb r page open so just click 401 cb r page open suppose the next signal is your 401 cb y page open so just double click and go here and now uh, you have to just write down as 401 CB Y page open and the last one suppose is 401 CB B page open. So it is very very easy to configure the input signal in case of PyCom relay. You just have to double click and then change the name of the signals uh, or the opto input because the, if you see here the default uh, signal name is opto level 17. Now if you want suppose this signal as your carrier channel fail so just uh, right click carrier channel fail and if you wire to this binary input then the, uh, whenever this binary input gets active in your dr you will see this carrier channel fail once uh, you have done this uh, the input level configuration as per the scheme suppose the next input is suppose the main cb ar lockout so it is already available suppose main cb PD operated, so, so main CB PD operated or tie CB PD operated, whatever signals which are available in case uh, of your scheme drawing. So, that all signals you can configure in the input levels. Now, next is output level. So, for the output levels, what you have to do is basically simply just go to this output levels and now if you want to configure any of your relay for suppose main CBTC1, main CBTC2 or TI CBTC1 or TI CBTC2 or suppose this uh, output number 41 you have hardwire for 86.2 operated so just click and then select 86.2 operated or suppose the next signal is your uh, relay unhealthy or suppose your next signal is carrier send so just select carrier send and write down carrier send now, uh, this is very, very easy in case of MyCom relay, the configuration of input and output. The next thing is the meaning of different settings. So, just go to group 1 and this is the distance element. In case of distance element, what we have to enter is the uh, details of your line length, then the total impedance, line angle and followed by the various zones that you want to protect and their zone settings. So, the zone status, just double click here. And this is this will show the various zones like zone 2, zone 3, zone 4, whatever we want to uh, have in our settings. Now, uh, after that, just enter the zone reaches that is Z1, then a resistive reach followed by the timing of zone 1, then zone 2, zone 3, zone 4. The important setting over here is your V memory validity, and this V memory validity must be greater than the uh, zone 3 time. So, if your zone 3 time is 1.5, you can see the V memory validity is 1.6. After that, this tilt angle, I have already explained in the very first session uh, uh, which were uploaded on my channel that the effect of pre-fault or uh, pre-fault power flow and the fault uh, resistance on the uh, performance of distance protection relay and in the quadrilateral or in the polygon characteristic, I have mentioned how this uh, characteristic is made dynamic, what are the impact of pre-fault power flow on the relay uh, characteristic. So, for that you have to select this tilt angle and then uh, go to 
distance scheme in the distance scheme as per our template we can select whether you want to have permissive underreaching scheme or permissive overreaching scheme so in my com relay pop z2 means permissive overreaching scheme now if suppose this is a parallel line with permissive overreaching scheme then you have to take care of the current reversal that's why there is any settings like t reversal guard the next thing is sotf tor mode so uh, for sotf tor mode simply double click and now as per the setting template that is available we can select whether we want to have the sotf enabled for uh, zone 1 or zone 2 or zone 3 so whatever zones as per our setting template we can select or deselect from here just click ok and after that if we can is enable that we can enable or if we disable we can disable then go to power swing just enter the settings of the power swing delta r delta x or current settings as per the setting template and the important thing over here is the blocking zones that is what which zones the uh, power swing will block so just select all if you want to block all zones or you can select any particular zone so suppose i want to select only zone 2 zone 3 and none of the other zones so in that case i just have to select these two and then ok so after that the important thing is backup over current now in backup over current generally for one and a half breaker scheme this will be the step protection and for step you will be having multiple set, uh, groups that is i1 i2 i3 i4 in my com relay we use i4 function this i4 uh, is uh, then in the PSL we have to link this i4 with the stop enable that we will see during the PSL configuration then broken conductor set as per your setting template the setting received uh, this must be uh, enabled then the i2 by i1 settings I have already explained the concept of broken conductor in one of my videos so if you have any doubt regarding broken conductor just go to go to the playlist of distance protection and you will get the basic idea of broken conductor how it is uh, determined by the relay why i2 by i1 setting what are the time delay and then finally since we use uh, broken connector only for the purpose of alarm so the tripping must be disabled after that go to earth fault protection this is basically the directional earth fault or def so you have to select this directional earth fault as ic standard inverse then the current settings and the TMS that we have to set and the characteristic angle and polarization that is negative sequence or zero sequence polarization this also we set as per the settings received and as per the setting available in the setting template then go to uh, voltage protection you can set uh, whether you want over voltage or under voltage protection V less than 1 and 2 is the under voltage stage 1 and stage 2 V greater than 1 and 2 is basically for the over voltage stage 1 and 2 since we are using only for the over voltage that's why I have selected only over voltage stage 1 and 2 so just select these two and then ok then uh, the measurement of the voltage that should be phase to neutral and this is dt means definite time the function and then you have to set the voltage settings and the time settings for stage 1 and the followed by the voltage and time setting for stage 2 then in case of supervision this supervision is basically for uh, VT fuse failure so it will detect the VT fuse failure uh, as per the internal algorithm of the relay and it will give the alarm after 5 seconds so these are some of the basic settings related with your MICOM relay and I hope the settings and configuration that is the input output configuration which is a very very easy, uh, easy configuration out of all the numerical relays and whatever I have explained is clear to all of you uh, in the next session we will discuss about the PSL logic how we have uh, we create the PSL logic in MICOM relay and then we will discuss about the MCL files and the uh, 61850 configuration of MICOM P444 relay if you like the content then you may share this video with your friends so that more and more people becomes aware about these concepts and they may apply these concepts at their location at their organization uh, we will meet shortly until then thank you and goodbye